this video I'm going to show you translations. So translations, they are just a type of transformation like a rotation, a reflection or enlargement. And if you were given a shape and asked to translate the shape, it would mean you would need to move the shape to the left, to the right, up or down. Okay, so that's the way you would move the shape. Now before we actually have a go at doing a translation or describing a translation, I want to show you column vectors. Okay, these are column vectors and these are generally what's given to you in a translation question. So over here is like a common general column vector that I've drawn. And it's just to show you in which direction the numbers tell you to move the shape. So to the left, to the right, up or down. Okay, so the number at the top of the column vector means to the left or to the right. If the number is a positive number, it would mean you have to move the shape to the right. And if it was negative, you would need to move the shape to the left. A bit like the x-axis. The positive values are on the right hand side and the negative values are on the left hand side. So that's a useful way to remember that. Underneath, the number here tells you whether you need to move the shape up or down. And in the same way as with the x-axis, on the y-axis, if it was a positive number, that would be going upwards. And if it's a negative number, it would be going downwards. Okay, so if this was positive 5, it would mean moving the shape 5 units up. And if it was negative 5, it would mean moving the shape 5 units down, okay? So let's have a look at these examples. Try to choose lots of different types so that we can practice this enough to get the hang of it. So in the first one, we have two positive numbers, 3 and 4. Remember, this number represents left or right. And if it's positive, like here, it means you move to the right. So with the shape you get given in the question, you would have to move the shape three units to the right and then four units up because this is also positive and if this is a positive number it means you need to move up so you would move your shape three units to the right four units up and then you would draw it in the new place okay and that would be the translated shape next we have a positive and a negative underneath so just like in the previous one this is positive so it means you're moving two units to the right but this time we have a negative 6, so that means the shape would need to move 6 units down. Okay, so you would take your shape, you would move 2 units to the right, 6 units down, and then draw it in the new position. Here, negative 5, positive 1. So this time the top number is negative. Remember, when it's a negative, it moves to the left. So this time we have to move the shape 5 units to the left. And this one is positive again, like in the first example. So when the number underneath is positive, it means you have to move up. So this one would be 5 to the left and 1 up. Okay, here we've got two negatives. So if it's a negative on top, it means to the left. And a negative underneath, it means go down. So we've got 7 units to the left and 1 unit down for that translation. Next we have a 0. Okay, so a 0 on top just means... The shape doesn't move to the left, it doesn't move to the right. It only moves two units down. So you would just leave that one as it is, okay? And then just draw the new shape two units below where it used to be, okay? Now for the last one, the zero's underneath. So this time it means you need to move eight units to the left, but the shape doesn't move up or down, okay? So the new shape would be drawn eight units to the left and that would be finished. Okay, so in this example, it says, describe fully the transformation of A onto B. So A is the start position. Usually we call this uh, drawing the object. And B is the finished position. Usually we say the image. So hopefully you can see this is a translation. Okay, that's the type of transformation. It hasn't rotated. It hasn't flipped like in a reflection. It hasn't changed size. It's just moved to the left and up. So it's a translation. So that's the first thing you need to write down when answering this question. Okay, so that's the type of transformation in this example. Next, we need to look a little bit more closely to see how many units the triangle has moved to the left and up so that we can write down our column vector, okay, like the ones I just showed you. So to do that, I suggest you choose a point on your triangle. So I'm going to choose the top point. 
and you need to compare it with the new top point, so over here. So if we start by counting how many units we move to the left, that will give us the top number in our column vector. So I'm just going to count the numbers. So I'm moving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the left. So that means the top of the column vector will be negative seven. Okay, remember, this number always represents left or right. And if we're moving to the left, like in this example, the number must be negative. Then let's look at the other direction. So this point moves one unit up. So if we're moving up, this number here has to be positive. So it would just be positive one. Okay, so that is the column vector. We've answered this question. We've described fully the transformation. It's a translation and this is the column vector. Alternatively, you could look at the coordinates of the points. So this one is coordinate 1, 4, and the top of this triangle is negative 6, 5. And hopefully you can see the x coordinate moves 7 to the left, and the y coordinate moves 1 up. So it's up to you which method you choose for that bit. Okay, so in the next example, it says, draw the image of A under the translation described by the vector 6 minus 5. Okay, so it's a translation, and we have to draw the image of A after the translation. So let's start by looking at the column vector. So this number at the top means left or right, and because this is a positive number, it means we're moving 6 units to the right. The number underneath means up or down, and because it's negative, it means we have to move five units down. So choose a point on shape A, so this trapezium. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose the top left point. And move that point six to the right and five down. So just count as you move across the grid. So if I count six units to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, so on the y-axis, and then five units down, one, two, three, four, five, I end up here at the coordinate zero minus one. Okay, so that top left-hand corner of the trapezium is now here. So you could do the same thing for each point of that trapezium and then join all your points up, or if you're really careful, you could just draw the trapezium from that one point. Just make sure that you remember this is the top left-hand corner of your trapezium when you draw the shape. So you can see that the length of this line here, the left-hand side of the trapezium, is three units. So when you draw the same shape down here, make sure it also has three units, okay? Make sure it's the same height. Okay, so that's the side here along the y-axis. Then the base is also three units. So you need to draw three units along. Obviously, when you do it on an exam question, you'll have a grid and a ruler and it will be a lot tidier than what I'm doing here. The top here is only one unit along, so the same thing here. And then you can just join up the last two points. Okay, I think it's probably quicker to do it like that um, than translating each point, but it's really up to you, okay? So there is the image of A. Sometimes we write A with a little dash to show that it's the image. We've translated shape A, and there is the finished position. I hope you found that lesson on translations useful. I will have some new videos coming soon on rotation, reflection, enlargement, and then just exam questions where I mix all the transformations together. So keep your eyes peeled for those.